As you can see, we can calculate Joule heat in magnetic problem. So we can use this value in heat transfer problem. I'll create a new problem. I call it heat. It's a transient heat transfer problem. Both static and transient formulation are allowed in quick field. I choose transient. And now we will calculate the heating process in time. I will use the same geometry model. The problem type is axisymmetric. The same length units. And I will calculate a short time process, about 10 seconds, with time step of 1 second. The automatic time stepping is available in quick field. I will use this fixed step for faster calculation. Now this is my heat transfer problem. The model is ready and I have to specify material properties. In thermal problem it will be thermal properties. So for the air I specify its thermal conductivity and other parameters. For the coil, it's a copper coil. The material parameters are the following. And I can specify power losses here, calculate it in magnetic problem. I can do it manually, just type in power losses here, but there is another option, it's to import losses automatically from magnetic to heat problem. And most induction heating problems are coupled multiphysics problems with heat loads transferred from magnetic problem to heat transfer problem. So I leave zero here and for the steel tube again I specify only material properties and no heat sources. And the heat sources I will take from my magnetic problem. Now I go to the heat transfer problem properties. Then I go to the links tab. And here I choose the coupling type. The generated heat. I will take generated heat from my magnetic problem. Now you see the problem, the thermal problem is linked to magnetic problem and it takes from magnetic problem the generated heat distribution. I will show you the solid problem to save time. Here it is, my thermal problem linked to magnetic problem. Now let's take a look at the result. Now this is the temperature distribution in my inductor. Again we can adjust the field picture.
we can see local values say the temperature here or here well you may notice that the heat protection screen would be a useful option for example here it would be good to place heat protection heat screen here and we can we can see plots the temperature along some lines and now the temperature in depth and this is the temperature distribution in depth you see there is a temperature difference of about 190 degrees which may cause thermal deformation of our steel tube and you can see the same values in the table and you can copy all the data of course from Quick Hill to other documents and with Tenzin problem you can check how the temperature changes in time so on the second on the fourth second it was much colder then it heated up and it may happen that you heat the body over the Curie point let's take a look at the time plot how the temperature changes in time so if you heat the body over the Curie point you have to adjust material properties in magnetic problem for each thermal zone so for this heated part in magnetic problem you will have to specify its own magnetic properties and for this cold part you will specify its own properties quick field allows special programming interface for automation of this tedious task. At one of the previous webinars dedicated to quick fuel to use for electrothermal devices, Peter Dixon shared his experience in using own programs together with quick fuel. He explained how to take into account the temperature difference of magnetic materials so those who are interested to learn more details about this technology are welcome to listen to the recorded version of this webinar it's available at our site and we will continue now with other problems